Somebody say vision. Please turn with me. Three quick scriptures we're going to read together. And then we get into the, uh, to the sermon. Isaiah 43 verse 19. God says, behold, I am doing a new thing. And it's going to spring forth. Now it's going to come into this world from nothing. Uh, it's going to spring forth. It's going to become seen from an unseen place. Do you see it? Look at somebody and say, you see it? God doing some new stuff, you know. Do you see what God is doing? Proverbs 29 verse 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, everybody will perish. Habakkuk 2 verse 2 says, God says, write the vision and make it plain. Make it very, very clear on tablets, on tables. Write it down that he who reads it may run with it. That he may run with it who readeth it. Amen? Vision. Vision. Well, when I was in, when we were in prep school, every year, my parents used to take us to Montego Bay, and there was this hotel got called Sea Winds or something like that. Sea Wind Hotel. Anybody ever been there? And we used to go there every year as a part of, I think, like a staff uh, event for my mother. And every year we used to get excited and we used to go down there. And it, uh, one day we were all there, the family, mommy and daddy, and four children, of which I was the youngest. And we were on, let's say, the sixth floor, and the weather wasn't so good outside, so we decided to play some games on the inside. And in this room, it had a big glass door that you could open up to a balcony or close it. So we would sit, we had to sit on the inside and find something to do. Uh, and we could see all of Montego Bay and all of the hotel and everything out this window. And one of my siblings said, let's play I Spy. How many of you know how to play I Spy? And I said, I love I Spy. All right? And we're all playing I Spy. I'm, I'm, I'm about nine years old at this time. And they're playing I Spy. And it was so great, and everybody, you know, I spy with my two little eye. Something beginning with, and then it came around to my turn. And you have to understand that I, when I was nine, I was, I was, I was very intelligent, or I, I, or so I thought. So I thought I was smarter than everybody else, and I found a word that started with a letter that nobody would get. So, because I spied, and I said, "Well, I spy with my two little eye." Something beginning with the letter C, right? And they began to guess. They started guessing inside the room, you know. Okay, I say, say a cabinet, and I say the carpet, right? And I say a cup, and I say a coffee maker, and I say, and I'm saying hot, hot, hot. You know, no, no, yeah, you're getting cold, you're getting cold, you're getting. I said, I say, well, give us a hint. I said, well, it's outside, and they all went to the window, and they're looking outside the window, and they're saying, okay, I see the, I see the uh, car park, and I see the, the, the the, the, you know, everything that begin, begins with a C outside. And they're guessing all these words. And one of them says, I see a car. And I say, you're close. Two hours later, <laughs> I was winning for two hours. And they wanted to kill me. They wanted to strangle me. Because we couldn't move on until somebody won. Right? And I was winning. I spied with my two little eyes. Something beginning with C. And they said, well, give us another hint. I say, okay. Um, it, it, it's actually a C-H word. And they say, oh, my goodness. Why, Chrissy, you're so smart. So see it, and it's okay. Um, uh, okay, uh, chair, right? And they, they began to pick, pick these words. Uh, is it a church, right? Is it a check-in counter? And I said, no, no. And they picked all of these ch words. An hour later, they wanted to strangle me. I said, I win, I win, I win. And they said, all right. And they all gathered around me, ready to kill me. And I said, you didn't get it. It's a C-H word. You guys, I'm so smart. I'm so smart. And I said, well, what is a word? What is a word? I said, ch 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 trailer <laughs> C-H-R-A-I. Well, I don't know. I was nine. Hey, I went for one of those hard words, right? <laughs> I said, they'll never get trailer. I was going to the truck, but I said, no, trailer is a little bit more. Because there was a trailer truck, and I said, well, it's kind of like a double. 
Somebody say, Chuchu. Trailer. Here's what you need to understand today. You see, that the game I Spy is really, uh, what it's all about, it's about you seeing something and then everybody else competes to see that same thing. Now, the only skill you need is eyes, right? But the one that wins is the one that sees the right thing. Everybody's playing, everybody's seeing stuff, but the person that wins is the person that's going to see what they need to see. To see the right thing. Somebody say, ch 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 the thing about life that you have to understand, right? The spiritual parallel uh, is, is that in this life, if you're going to be successful, you can't only have eyes. You are going to have to be able to have eyes that can see the right thing. Because you could waste a whole lot of time looking for stuff. You can waste a whole lot of time guessing stuff. But unless you can see the right thing, you're going to lose. I'm here to tell you that... You need vision so that you can see that success is guaranteed not just by those who have eyes to see, but by those who will see the right thing. Somebody said, ch -ch -ch trailer. Today, what I want you to understand is vision. And I would like to get you in a position, in a place where you can see clearly what you need to see. I want all of you to win. So today, I'm going to tell you what you need to see. Vision. Now, vision is seeing what God sees. Vision is seeing what God sees. Vision is seeing uh, what, what is unseen. Vision is seeing the future. Vision is seeing what is not there yet. Vision is seeing the future, God's future. You want to be successful. You need to see what God is seeing. You need to see the future. How many of you can see the future? How many of you, like me, can see the future? You're going to see the future today. So we always play this game and we say, boy, um, you know, if I could go back in time, you know, I'd love to go back in time. If I could just go back in time, I'd go back to when I'm like 15, right? And the, the caveat, uh, and the, the, the factor there is they say, if I could go back in time, knowing what I know now, right? Because if I could go back in time, knowing what I know from here, bringing it to the past, then I would have seen the future. And if I could do that, then I, could, I can't lose. If I can just go back in time, uh, if I did what I would do, Knowing the future, I would line myself up with that future. The future that I want. If I could go back in time, knowing the future, I would set everything up to, to, to line up. I would set myself up good. I would, I would always be prepared. I would always be in the right place at the right time. I would always be with the right people and never the wrong people. All right? If I could go back in time, knowing what I know now, I would have that knowledge. I would have the power. To always win. I would, I would be guaranteed success if I could know the future. How many of you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you that supernatural power is knowing the future. And being able to line yourself up with that. The success God wants to give you, right? He's going to give you the future, show it to you. So that you can line yourself up with it. So that you can invest in that picture that you see. So that you can be in the right place at the right time. So that you can stop hanging around with the wrong people. It's called vision. The power in vision is that you can see the future. What is happening now is that people have no vision and therefore they are perishing. It's really interesting that not only do people who have no vision perish, but people who have the wrong vision perish. You perish if you have no vision, and you perish if you have the wrong vision. You see, the thing about vision is that it compels you. Whatever you're seeing in your eyes, these dreams that you have, they are compelling you and they're drawing you. The things that you want most, these pictures that you are 
seeing in your mind that you want, the vision that is in your heart will compel you. And what you see in your heart and what you want in your heart is who you will be and what you'll fight to have. I'm just telling you that if you have no vision, you're actually going to end up nowhere. And if you have the wrong vision, you are going to end up in the wrong place. So today I need you to check yourself. Say, God, I need to check whether I have vision and whether I have the right vision because the wrong vision is going to end up in the wrong place. See, God wants to offer you his vision and some of you are stuck on a vision that you have. Many are the plans of a man or a woman, but it's, it's really God's plan that's going to work. Nothing else works. But some of us are stuck and some of us are stubborn, right? And we're stuck with our own vision. Some of you came here today with your vision and it is different from God's vision. And God is trying to get you to see his vision Trying to get you to see the future he has for you. But you, you're kind of determined to get what you see. Not true. There's a story of a gentleman who, you know, a lot of unfortunate circumstances in life. And he, he became uh, homeless. Right? And he would just, he was kind of a vagrant. And he would walk around the place and he would try and find. Uh, and, and he was just, he got to the place where he was so tired. Uh, tired and hungry and, 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 uh, <sighs> And he found a cabin, right? And he went to this cabin. He knocked on the door and said, maybe there's somebody in there that can help me. Give me some food. Give me something, right? I'm hungry. I'm tired. And he knocked on the door and this lady opened the door and she said, hi, sir. He said, well, I'm hungry. I'm homeless. I need some help. And she says, okay. Wow. She says, well, I was actually looking and waiting for someone just like you, right? She says, picture this. Well, here's what I need. Um, I'm going to go inside and I'm going to cook a big pot of chicken and rice and peas. I'm going to cook up some food, right? And I'm going to come out and I'm going to feed you, okay? And then you're going to go there. I'm going to set up the shed and you can sleep there. Food and summer. She said, all you need to do for me, right, is take this saw. She gave him this saw. And she said, there's some trees right behind you. I just need to saw those trees down for me. I've been waiting for somebody just like you, right? And he said... And he stood up there, and he took the saw, and he went like this. And she said, you know, what happened? He said, I, I don't understand what you're saying. She said, okay, I'm going to go inside, cook some food, okay? Come back out, give you the food, set up the shed. You can sleep in the shed. All you need to do is take the saw, and he has the saw in his hand, and look behind you. There are some trees. There are two trees I needed to cut down those trees, right? Just saw the tree. And he goes like this. And she said, what's wrong with you? He said, I don't understand. I don't see what you're saying. She said, well, turn around. And look, the trees are right behind. He goes, and she said, I don't understand what's wrong with you. I'm going to cook the food, set up a shed. Just take the saw, cut down the tree. Right? Just turn around. And, and, and he goes like this. And she said, I don't understand why you don't get it. He says to her, he says, here's the deal. I know... You see, you, you, you think you saw me see the trees. You, you think you saw me see it. But you're never going to see me saw it. Get it? You see, saw it, see it, saw it. Let me say it again. I know you think you saw me see it. But you, are, you now see me saw it. Because he didn't want to saw it. An interesting thing about life is that some of us don't want to saw it. So we say we don't see it. And, and until, you, until, you, until you want to saw it, then you're probably not going to see it. Uh, after a while, I'll just start talking patois. <laughs> and say, did you saw it or not? I now saw it. I see it, but I now saw it. Some of us are so stubborn and so stuck that we refuse to see what we need to saw. No, don't clap because you should have laughed. <laughs> I don't want your applause. I want your laughter. But some of you don't want to see it. Many are the plans of our hearts. I, I want to know what is in your heart. What is in your heart that you're seeing that causes you to not saw it? 
there's, ladies, tell me if I'm lying. The only thing worse than having no man for five years is having the wrong man for five years. Some of you, <laughs> some of you are stuck. I say it's better to have none. People perish because they have none, but they're worse off because they have the wrong. I'm just telling you, some of you with the wrong man, hey, can clap for that one. Don't laugh. Or, yes, some of you are just, some of you have the wrong woman. What I'm saying is what you're seeing and what you're going after is wrong. And you know them wrong. And you're still in hot pursuit. And God is saying, no, no, I spy. I spy something different. And you stuck looking for, looking for, a, tra looking for a trailer with a sea. Some of you, what you've been fighting for and what you've been building, building that vision is, is just not God's vision. I want to read about that and just so you can understand what happens. Uh, Haggai chapter 1 verse 4, it says this. Verse 4, is this a time for you yourselves to be living in big pretty houses while this house, and he's pointing to the temple, the church, while it lies in ruins unbuilt. Is this the time for you to be pursuing that vision while this vision is not complete? Is it, is it the time to be compelled by that rather than this? It's just a question God is asking, is it? Verse 5, here's what God says. Now this is what I say, God says. Be careful Though, to your ways, be very, very, very careful what you're doing, what you're pursuing, what you're building. Be very, very careful. Verse 6. You have planted much, but harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you're never full. You put on your clothes, but you're not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Yes. I mean, you're pursuing the building of your own home and vision while... You're not building God's vision, right? Be careful because you're going to remain hungry. You're going to remain thirsty. You're going to remain, you're going to be making but losing. It's like you're not going to have, I don't understand. Something is wrong, God. Something is wrong. I, I'm, I'm guessing wrong. Ch -ch -ch -ch. You expected much, right? Because, because you went to church and the pastor, the preacher, talked about all of what God wants to do for you and your house. And he should have been preaching God's vision first. Right? So what happened is you're pursuing your stuff and building your stuff. And you expected much, but you see, it turned out to be little. There's a priority when it comes to vision. Right? What you brought home is me, God saying, blow it away. Why? Because my house remains in ruin. My house don't build yet. While each of you are busy building your own house. While you're busy pursuing your own vision. While you're busy building your own thing. And you have a theology that, that pushes you in that direction. God is saying you have to understand, right? That, that there is a vision that is bigger than your vision. I'm just saying that God is saying my vision, a vision to build my corporate vision, my vision for my people, supersedes your vision for you. I'm just telling you what the Word of God says. There's a, there's a priority. You might want to know why what you think is right is feeling so wrong. What, what you're investing in is just not giving you the returns you thought it would. Is because you're pursuing, you're being compelled by the wrong vision. God is saying, please focus your attention on my stuff first. See, if my stuff build, then we can go back. And then the whole narrative will change and God will say, it is now time for you to build your homes. And now I will build your home. See, some of us, we are climbing the mountain. I just want to make sure 
that you don't climb a mountain, get to the top of the mountain, lift your hands up and say, I did it. I made it. I'm, I, I fought to get here and I'm at the top of my mountain. And you look over and you see God on another mountain and say, but Je Jesus Christ. God, what are you doing over there? He said, I was always over here. This is, this, is, this is where you should have been. And you're all the way over here. Hungry. You have food, but you're hungry. You have drink, but you're thirsty. You have enough, but you're on the inside, you're empty. I'm just saying. God is saying, do you have the right vision? Are your priorities... Or your visions, your, the priorities of your vision in place. There's nothing wrong with building a house. But there is something wrong if you're building a house before God's house is built. If I was you, I'd find a, if I was you, I'd find a house I got and build it. Faster than you're building yours. Mercy. Well. Today, God is saying, I spy... With my big, divine, all-seeing, all-knowing eyes. What you need to pursue. What you need to see. And what you, what you need to be compelled by. Who wants to know what God spies? I'm going to tell you today. I'm going to tell you what God sees. I'm going to give you the vision that will guarantee you success. I'm going to give you the vision that you need to line yourself up behind. I'm, I'm really just going to give you four words. That paint a thousand pictures for you. And you're going to guess. First of all, I spy with my two little eyes a word beginning with F. And I just want to call Dr. Pat. Here's what I spy. I'm going to show you what I spy. Mr. Posit um, Allen, Reverend Allen. Deanne, can you come? Elder Bennett, can you just come and just stand up close to each other? Stand up close and let's hold on to each other. I spy with my two little eyes. Here's what you need to be pursuing. I spy with my two little eyes. Watch this. A mother. A father. A sister. And a brother. I spy with my divine eyes, God is saying, a family. A very odd family. I mean, she brown, him brown, she, we don't, she, him, ball head. I, I, I see a, a very odd family, but I see a mother, a spiritual mother. I see a spiritual father. I see a spiritual sister. I see a spiritual brother. That is yours. I spy something beginning with F. What do I spy? Family. God is saying, I am building a family, a place where you can belong, a place where you can come here if you don't, if you don't have a mother and, and have a mother, a place where you can come here with all your daddy issues and find somebody to help father you, a place where you can come and, and, and you, you, you've been hurt by your sisters and you, you, you don't have any female friends because them talk a lot and them so them fight, fight, and God is saying, come together and, and find new sisters. Women, women find it hard to get along. Right? Men, all of the brothers and the friends you have out there aren't giving you what you need. The godly brotherhood that you need. Lodge can't give it to you. Football team can't give it to you. Nowhere else can, can give you. I'm just saying, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for a mother, a father, a sister and a brother. You may be seated. I see a family. I see people coming together and belonging to each other. Being for each other what God needs them to have in each other. So God has told us at Go For God Family Church to build a family that builds a community that will build the nation. For the nation to be built, it has to be built on the foundation of family. And let me tell you, it might not be your family. It might not be your blood family. 
What I'm telling you is that God gives us another alternative, right? A, a, a divine alternative to your blood family is a family built by his blood. The blood of Jesus flowing through all of us, pulling us together, calling us together in unity. One family, right? God is saying, go for God, build a family that builds this community that will build the nation. If you destroy the family, you destroy the nation. There are people out there that need fathers. And their fathers here. The persons you know out there that, that, that need brothers. Their brothers here. I spy a family. I spy a family for you. God is saying, I want to give you a family. If you decide to be a brother... You'll find family here. All you have to do is be who you're, you're supposed to be. I'm just saying, if, if you're a man, God is calling you to be a father, a brother, and, and, and maybe a son. If you decide to be that, you'll find family here. I mean, some of you, what it is you've been needing in your life is family. And God is saying, I see it right here. Do you see it? Stop looking out there for that family. That God has made for you. I like my family. I like the family I grew up with. And I like the family I'm building. The Morgan thing. is not that bad. But, but God has given us something more powerful. God has given me you. And I celebrate you today. Celebrate the person to your left and to your right. I spy. I spy family. Yes, Mark. Mark's a... I'm not clapping with him left hand. A brother. All right, ready for the next one? I spy. God is saying with my divine eyes, something beginning with W. God is saying, I want a room filled with laces. Laces. Lacy. Let me tell you about lacy. There's a young lady... She's a middle-aged woman that I met at Covenant Church of Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, right? I was on staff there. Uh, when I got there, uh, it's, it's hard to not notice Lacey at church. Lacey's in the dance ministry, right? Lacey's in the intercession ministry. Lacey, every Sunday, wears leopard print, hat, top, Pants and shoes. Everything leopard print. And it don't have to be the same leopard either. <laughs> it don't matter what leopard. Leopard. No matter what shade of leopard. She leopard it out. But Lacey was one of the most impacting people for me at Covenant Church of Pittsburgh. And God is saying, I need a, 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 an atmosphere filled with laces. Here's what Lacey would do on a Sunday morning. So during worship... Lacey would do something like this. And, and I would watch her, right? Because I was on staff. And so I'd be worshiping, but I'm always working. And, and Lacey, she'd stand there and she'd... And she'd lift up her hand and she'd, she'd worship like this. Then she'd worship like this. And then, then she'd do one of these. Right? And then you look at her and we used to watch Lacey. Because, the, you know, the, the, as the worship is being built and as she and she'll... Right? And she, hallelujah. And she claps her hand and then she do. And she spit and she. And then we'd wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Right? And then in, at, at about the third song, every Sunday, when we, we, just knew, we knew when the presence of God hit the room because Lacey was ready. Lacey would, hey! And Lacey would just take off running. Lacey would take off running, put her head up on it. Run down, and she runs around the building, running around the building, joy on her face, right? Uh, you know, this awesomeness on her face, and she just wanted to worship God. Uh, it, it's as if she was running after God. And she said, I know he's in this room, but I'm going to catch him. And she's running, and she's running, and she would run about three times around the entire sanctuary. And then she would come, and then she would stop and go, Okay. 
<clears throat> and she would run again. Three times around again, and we that were working now, we'd watch her. We'd watch Bishop Garlington, and he's up there. And there would come a point where Bishop Garlington would look at us and go, in other, word, in other words, that's enough. <laughs> and he would give us a nod, and then we would go, and she'd be running, right? And it would stop her, and I remember stopping her one time, and I stopped her. She said, she said, <laughs> eh? I didn't know whether she was crying or laughing. And I said, so she said, okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Hey! And she's off running again. Every Sunday. Running, worshiping, dancing, crying, all in one. And I remember, I was asked to help her to move. So I got the church van, got two or three of the young adult males, and I had a moment when, it, when I was alone with her in her van. Lacey didn't have much. She didn't have much. All of her stuff fit in one van. Right? I'm in the front, in her van, a lot of leopard stuff fit in one van. And I'm in the van alone with her, and I said, Lacey, can I ask you a question? She said, sure, Pastor Chris. I said, I said, why? <laughs> you know, what makes you run like that every Sunday? What makes you run so much? She, just, she did one, one of these. I said, Lord, maybe. Let me lock the doors. Because <laughs> she looked like she's ready for a run again. Did I start something? She said, oh, Pastor Chris, you don't understand. God has brought me through so much. God has been so good to me. He's been so good to me. He said, if you knew where I was, if you knew what I was coming from, if you knew how bound I was, then and only then will you understand why I'm running so much. She says, I run because I'm free. I run because I'm free to worship my God. I run because of what he took me out of. I run because nothing will ever put me in chains again. I run because there's nothing anybody beside me can do to stop me from running towards my God. I run because I am free. I am free, she said. I'm, I'm too free to not run. I can't not run. I run because I'm free. What God is saying, I spy with my divine eyes worshipers. Worshipers that will come into an environment and be free. I'm not worried about the people to the left and to the right. I spy worshipers that are grateful. I see worshipers that are faithful. I see worshipers that are desperate. God is saying, I want a room filled with laces. I need worshipers. He says, because where there are laces, that is where I will be. God has called us at Go For God Family Church to build an environment where we can create an atmosphere for the miraculous. Where we create an atmosphere for God's presence and God's power. Where we can create an open heaven over this atmosphere. God is saying, build that place and fill it with worshipers. And I only want laces in that room. He says, so I'm going to set some of you free. But it's going to come while you worship. God is saying, some of you, some of you are going to have to run first. Some of you are going to have to run for your freedom. Like a slave running from the enemy, running towards God. How many of you will run for your freedom? How many of you are ready to build a place? God is saying, build me a room that has space for them to run. Build me a room that can have uh, the full expression of worship in the arts. God is saying, we're going to build a multi-purpose performing arts center that looks something like this. Who's ready to build that? Who's ready to run? We have our eyes on some land. We've seen the land. And God is saying, I see the worshipers. Who's ready? You can take it off.
Who see it? Who see it? You see it? You saw it? Who saw it? That Moano. Moano, who see it? Moano, who heard of a sight? Thank you. I saw it, that's for sure. Those who saw it will see it. Amen? Amen? All right. I spy with my little eyes. Almost done. Something beginning with L. Love. How many of you used to have JBC? You used to watch JBC? Well, we used to run home. We used to rush home after, you know, when we got home after school. Sit down. And we would watch evening time. Work is over now. Is. Right? We didn't have satellite like the Gibsons and the Lawsons and the Shields. Right? We used to watch JBC. Right? And there was a show that used to come on called Super Friends. Anybody watch Super Friends? Right? And Super Friends was the show that featured Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman and Robin. The real superheroes. Right? Not the marvelous ones. Right? I'm talking about super, the original Superman and DC, right? If you're into comics, right? Superman, Batman, Robin, uh, Green Lantern, Aquaman, and then some of, for some of you, your favorite, the ones, and then boom, them fists, Wonder Twins. <coughs> oh, uh, oh, <laughs> <and> what, <laughs> Booth. What, what Wonder Twins say? Wonder Twins power, Wonder Twins power, form of, uh, well, go and watch it, it's on YouTube, right? So the boy could turn into water, and, uh, or like the she could turn into water, he could turn into an animal, any animal, and change their form. Powerful stuff. Now, they all were so powerful, and they used to gather at one place, uh, called the, 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 hall, the Hall of Justice, and every scene would start... And it would have this sound, and it would say, meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice, and they're all sitting down around a table, looking at this big screen, looking at the world, looking at the world and its problems and its issues, and they would talk about their enemy, and they would talk about what needs to be done to their enemy, and they're all standing there in their onesies, <laughs> all standing there in their tights. And Superman would do something like this. He would say, all right, Aqua, you go there. You go by way of water because that's where your power is. Right? And Wonder Woman, you fly and carry a lasso because that's where your power is. Right? And, and Green Lantern, you just, <laughs> just go over, sucker. <laughs> We're not too sure where you're. <laughs> Batman, take Robin and just go. We don't know why Robin is here, but Batman, <laughs> you're... You, you, you have that fast and you can sh you shoot bullets and you throw these things. You go and go in that power of yours. Right? And I will go and I will come because I have strength and I'm faster than a speeding bullet and I'm all that kind of stuff. Right? And they would, they would make a plan and they would all go out in their power because all of them had power to do something. All of them had power that the enemy was afraid of. They were all dangerous. None of them looking for safety. All ready to bring harm to the enemy. Armed and dangerous. And they would go out and they would fight. And they, they would destroy their enemy. And then the powerful thing about what they used to do. Is that the, every week, every episode the show would end. With meanwhile at the halls of justice. And they would all be sitting down there again. And they would be talking and giving some kind of joke. They all went out. Did what they were supposed to do. And came back. And sat together. God is saying, I spy leaders. I spy a place where leaders will go out in all of their power and become and do all of what they're supposed to do on this earth and come back. I spy a place where leaders will get together and scheme and plan against their enemy. Where they will unite and go out to destroy their enemy. I spy leaders. How many of you saw it? I spy leaders coming together. Leaders will come together. God is saying to go for God. Build a place where leaders will become empowered. Some of them are going to come in as followers, but they're going to become leaders. Uh, right? They're going, they're, going to be coming, they're going to come in wounded, but they're going to be strengthened. Right? 
They're going to come in broken, but they're going to be made whole. They're going to come in weak, but they will be strengthened. God is saying, I spy, I see a place where leaders will come to be empowered. Leaders will come and discover their calling and discover their giftings. I spy a place. The Justice League at Go For God Family Church. God is saying where leaders will come to lead Jamaica. He says, so build me a leadership institute. He says, build a place where leaders will come to learn the word of God. To learn kingdom principles and principles of leadership. Amen. It's the building is going to look something like this. A leadership institute. He says, I'm going to put you on land where they want a leadership institute. Do me right by the church, same place. A place where you produce leaders. Where you create leaders. Let me just tell you, ladies and gentlemen. What Jamaica needs is leadership. Godly leadership. So I know... Some of you sit down and you're, you're talking about what you th the problems that are in Jamaica and what you think Jamaica needs. And it needs fathers. It needs education. And it needs, uh, it needs prayer. And it, what Jamaica needs is le are godly leaders leading it. Jamaica needs a place that will produce godly leaders. How many of you, how many of you are willing to be a part of that? As we close, I spy... God is saying something with my divine eyes, something beginning with a C. <laughs> Sorry, not a CH. <laughs> not a ch church, not a CH. I'll just give you this one. I, I see celebration. I see celebration. In the midst of all of what is happening, I see celebration. Let me give you two reasons why. Because of what celebration is. Celebration is that spiritual act that pulls from the past, pulls God's power from the past into the future, into your present. Celebration is that spiritual act of pulling God's power from the past into your present. Uh, we, the act of celebration and commemoration for what God has done causes you to evoke the power, the same power that was there when God did something in the past in your present. It's based on the feeling and the knowing and the reality that if God did it before, he will do it again. God says, I need you to have the faith to walk into that. And the best way to walk in to what I am going to do is like this. That's the best way to walk into your future. So, how many of you understand what I'm saying? Celebration is the best way to walk in. So, I mean, if you read the Old Testament and the New Testament, this, God commanded them to go and kill a goat, kill, a, no, kill some stuff, right? And, and, and pour some wine. And he would say, feast and laugh and drink. And celebrate what I've done. Commemorate what I've done. Everything that God did for his people. He said, next year the same time I want you to party. Next year the same time I want you to spend all your money. And celebrate what I've done. Never ever leave the reality. And the power of what I've already done for you in the past. You need it now. You need to. Bring up what I've done for you in the past now, again, right now into your future because that is what will launch you. Some of you, God has done some stuff for you, but you've left it in the past. God is saying, I dare you to dance. I dare you to celebrate. I dare you to commemorate what I've done. In the New Testament, Jesus is sitting with his disciples and he said, I'm about to die. I'm about to go on the cross. I'm about to shed my blood. So whenever you get together, commune together and commemorate what I've done. Somebody say communion. It's a commemoration. He's saying, if you would dare celebrate 
my death and my resurrection. How many of you know that whenever you take communion, it is an opportunity to evoke the same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead into your present? Because he did it before, and I'm telling you he can and will do it again. And I'm ready to celebrate all of what God has done. God commands us to celebrate. God is commanding you to celebrate. God says, I see celebration. Celebration is going to be that thing that's going to bring some stuff into your life. I'm telling you, begin by celebrating the past. The second definition for celebration is really, um, is, is that celebration is that prophetic act that brings the future God has for you into your present. You have to have faith for this one, right? He says, I'm going to show you something that I'm going to do. And I don't want you to wait until it happens to, to act like you have it. I'm going to show you what is coming. And for it to happen, I need you to celebrate it now. In order to call that thing and to pull that thing out of eternity somewhere where God is into your now, you need to celebrate there has to be celebration in your mouth. There has to be a dance in your feet. There has to be a declaration. God is saying, I needed to celebrate and bring what I want to do. I needed to thank me for it before it happens. I needed to get happy now because it's guaranteed. God says, I see celebration. I see a people that are not afraid to celebrate the future now. God is saying, I need you to Celebrate the unseen. Bring the unseen. God is saying, I need you to saw it. How many of you saw it? How many of you saw what God says he says he's going to do? How many of you would dare? Let me show you how this works. If, if you are believing God for something, there's something in the unseen that you are believing him for that God has said is yours, I dare you to put your hands together right now. <laughs> Celebrate for that husband that you're going to get. For that unborn child, celebrate now. All of your debt erased, celebrate now. I dare you. I dare you to celebrate what God has not yet done. Or what God has already done. And bring it into now. God is saying celebrate what is unseen and you will see it. You will see it. A long time ago, nine years into marriage, Peter Morgan and Patricia Morgan decided to celebrate their wedding anniversary. Now, there are three children in. One is eight, one is five, one is one. Right? And they said, no, we are going to celebrate nonetheless. It's not easy to celebrate when you have three children. Right, parents? You can't get away. You can't make it happen. But they chose to celebrate anniversaries, Christmas Eve. So Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, uh, the, sto the, the story that I heard was that they chose to celebrate. And they were in where? Ocho Rios? Somewhere like that in, a, in, in some, at a great house. <laughs> Paint the picture, daddy. Huh? In Runaway Bay. Runaway Bay, great house, right? And, and, they, and they celebrated. And they celebrated so good <laughs> that, 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 that marriage, that they drew upon the power of that ma marriage and that, that, that honeymoon night, that first night. That they evoked that power. So we choose to celebrate Three children in, right? You know, but, but we, we celebrate our marriage. And they celebrated. And one of the most powerful things happened. <laughs> one of the greatest gifts <laughs> God has ever gain, given to, to them, at least. Eight months later, because he was premature, Christopher Morgan was born. I'm just here to tell you that they celebrated good. 
really well. And something was birthed. God is saying that I'm waiting on you to celebrate. Because as you celebrate, things will be birthed into your future. Things that you've been waiting for. And the way the story goes is that they were not supposed to get pregnant. They were in a season that pregnancy was improbable, almost impossible. Right? That it was inconceivable. That it would have been unbelievable. Right? But, but yet still, God pushed his way through. And I swam. I'm just saying, some of you are going through a season right now where, where success and what you want birthed in your life feels unbelievable and improbable. Some of you are going through a season right now where you say, I don't deserve, I don't deserve it. Right? Some of you are going through a season where you think it, it financially won't work, where it physically won't work, and your faith has dwindled, and God is saying, all you need to do is to celebrate. God is saying, I need you to celebrate and evoke my power. Tap into all of what I've done in the past for you and celebrate now. Tap into all of what I want to do for you in the future and bring it into your now. There are things that God wants to birth in you and it demands that you would celebrate. That you would get up off of your boring tail and celebrate that you would stop allocating funds in the wrong place and towards the wrong vision and celebrate God. Some of you have been investing in some things that are, are, are not going to help you at all. Some of you have been making bad investments. God is saying the best investment you can make is celebration. Who's ready to celebrate? I spy, God is saying, with my big divine eyes, celebration. I'm calling you to celebrate. Let me just tell you, a spirit of celebration will destroy your depression. A spirit of celebration will destroy your stagnancy. A spirit of celebration will destroy your barrenness. I'm prophesying and I'm telling you. That if you would just get a spirit of celebration, so, so I, it hasn't happened yet, but I'm going to celebrate. Where can I celebrate my God? Where can I go and celebrate what he has done? Destroy the darkness in your life, ladies and gentlemen. Celebrate. Embarrass the enemy. He's going to want to know, after I've done so much to them and have them going through, through, through so much, how is it that they can still celebrate you, God? Make the devil upset. Embarrass the enemy, make the right investment, and celebrate your God. God is saying, I'm looking for celebrants. <laughs> Persons who will celebrate me. If that's you, put your hands together. Let us together go for God. Let us go after our healing. Let us go after our freedom. Let us build an atmosphere for the supernatural, for our children. Let's build a culture of freedom for our children. Let's build a place of healing for our children. Let's build a home for our children and our children's children. Some of you have been feeling hopeless. You say, you don't know why you brought these children into the world. I love them, but God, the world is so evil. God is saying, build my house. My house will be the answer for your children. Build the church. It will train your children. God is saying, build 
a church that will be the foundation for the, your, your personal brand. Don't build your brand on, uh, on your, your, your abilities. Build it on God. I will, become, I will be the foundation for your business, God is saying. My presence, my word. God is saying, I hope that you see what I see. Because it will guarantee you success. Hey, thank you so much for watching us here. Go for God Family Church on YouTube. Why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button to ensure that you get all of what is new from Go for God Family Church and to ensure that you don't miss anything.